first up tonight, we're uh, we're going to be crossing over to Kezia, who is currently also in home detention. So, Kezia, are you there? Let's see if we can find her. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yep, hot to trot. How's it going? Good. I'm sorry, my voice isn't. 100 percent right now but yeah doing good oh well good to good to see you upright so yeah yeah i'm good good considering yeah sorry i said that's good considering you know having yeah COVID. feeling as good yesterday but prayers have helped for sure oh excellent so we're about to you at the moment i'm in adelaide at the moment i came to leadership camp which was such a blessing <laughs> but unfortunately at the end of it i found myself with COVID, um, but I have to say so far, everyone that was in close contact with me is so far negative. So I think that's only of the Lord, even my sister who I shared a caravan with, so. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, oh. it was good at my parents. So it's nice having them to take care of me as well. Ah, <laughs> uh, so, so you couldn't help yourself. You had to return home, had to line yourself <laughs> up back under mum's roof when you get the, the COVID. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's been very helpful. Yeah, oh, sure. <laughs> they played it well. Okay, so well, I've got a few questions for you tonight. So, you know, this is uh Wednesday United, which you know primarily is New South Wales and ACT. So where are you where are you currently residing permanently? Permanently? I live in Sydney. Okay, and when did you move over? I moved over to Sydney this like just a week ago last year so it's been my one month one year anniversary of living in sydney gee that's gone quick oh that's awesome all right so we've got a, a transplant like myself <laughs> nice and uh and what forced the move or prompted, so, sorry. well there are a few things actually so i was i just started dating james roman which some of you may know but um, I really actually left it up to the Lord about whether I moved over there or not. You know, there's always like, who's going to move or are you going to do long distance? Or, um, But yeah, I applied for two jobs and said, Lord, just tell me which one to go. And he made it very, very clear that Sydney was where I was meant to be. So oh, that's awesome. Why. Yeah. Oh, well, their loss, our gain. So <laughs> welcome, even though you've been here for a year. Good to have you on board. Good. Okay. So, so it gives a bit of your background. Did you... Did you grow up in church or did you come along later or what would you do? I grew up in a family, spirit-filled family, which um, definitely a big blessing. So my parents were spirit when they were teenagers, brought me and all my sisters up um, knowing God and knowing the Bible. So, yeah, that's me. Okay, so, so it was just kind of what you knew from birth. Yeah, it was. Um, uh, I could, yeah, so from birth, like I knew prayer in the Bible, what was right. I knew that God was real and that he has power as well, which is a very firm foundation to grow up on. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah, nice. Okay, so at, at what age did you realise that, you know, what you had to do to to be saved, you know, to have salvation? Yeah, so when I was... Uh, so I, again, like like being the third of four, I saw both my older sisters receive the Holy Spirit and get baptized before me. I remember watching Esther get baptized and I didn't quite understand what she was doing. I was just like, how come she's in the bath on stage, you know? Um, but Beck, and then when, like when I was probably eight years old, I was like, oh, I need to receive the Holy Spirit. This is something I need to ask for. And um, it was when I was nine years old, a year later, I received the Holy Spirit. And I knew that because I spoke in tongues. So that was my own language. I grew up kind of mimicking my parents' tongues because, you know, you, you, you copy what you hear. So I'd copy their tongues, but I knew when I was nine, I spoke in my own new language. So, and then I got baptized as well. Yeah, nice. Okay. So I guess the, in that regard, the penny kind of dropped pretty early. Um, so... So this is a bit of a different question to the usual ones then. At, at what age did you realise that you you have a choice, you know, whether you pursue a life with God or whether you go out and do your own thing? I love that question because they are different ages for me. Like when I was nine, I really think I had that, you know, God says to come unto him as a child. And that was me at nine. You know, I knew that I need to see the Holy Spirit and get baptised. And that's what I did. 
Um, but I think going into my tween, tween years, teen years, um, I, I was on some medications, had some emotional kind of problems and all this. And I was a bit, you know, lukewarm. But at the same time, I knew very firmly that, again, God was real and the Bible is right. But I then started to question things like what makes which I'm actually grateful for, what makes our church the right church? You know, are we just one of many churches who all have it wrong? You know, like, are we actually following what God wants us to do? Um, and so I was probably 13 or 14 and I heard a testimony where someone described exactly what I had been feeling and how they'd prayed about it and received that healing. And I was like, and that was a realisation point for me where I went, oh, this is something that I can pray about like, because I, I think I always sort of physical healings, but like emotional or mental um, kind of solutions I hadn't really thought of before. So I'd say, yeah, when I was like probably 14 years old, I took that into my own hands and read the Bible, pursuing the truth for myself rather than just like I'd always been fed, you know, this is the truth. And, and I believed it, but I wanted to be sure of it. And yeah, so I'd say I was probably 14 when I started to take that on for myself. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I can definitely relate to that. I mean, myself, I received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues when I was 10. And then when I was 14, I guess I, I kind of was put into a position where I had to decide if I wanted to follow God or not. But for myself, I don't know, it sounds like for you, it was more of the, the short term view of what the Lord could do for you and those healings and that that kind of made you choose those paths. Is that, is that right? Yeah, it was like, I, that. yeah, I agree with that. So it was kind of like that temporary moment, but that was the catalyst to me, like that independence that you like talk about, like seeking my own healing and then um, pursuing, yeah, the truth for myself. So that was like the start, I'd say, like obviously receiving the Holy Spirit was the start of my own walk, but I'd say that was the start of me, um, yeah, being more independent in my walk, trying yeah. to feed myself, not just be fed by others. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just interesting to hear, you know, your, your situation kind of prompted that and, mm-hmm. you know, the position you're in. I, I think for, for myself being in a similar situation, it was more the looking at the long term. And yeah. I kind of had to look at, you know, how, how some of the guys I knew where they were headed and then how some of, you know, my, my role models around me who were uh, all in the church, you know, how they'd position themselves. And I guess it was more the, the long-term view kind of prompted me like, oh, I need to, I need to choose this path if I want to be like them. Otherwise, you know, I can see where this ends, but it's, it's just awesome to see that, you know, be it by our situation or, you know, by pursuing healings for ourselves or whatever, you know, the Lord kind of prompts us and the spirit guides us with, uh, with, with which part we should take. Yeah. Okay. Ah, that's gold. All right. Well, what do you like most about living a life with God actively a part of it? Um, what do I like most? I don't know, like most. I think to me the most important and amazing thing is just that Jesus died on the cross. <laughs> like I kind of, and that I, I'm someone who always looks back at like the story of Job who lost everything, the end of chapter one, and he says, he, like I've lost everything but, you know blessed be the name of the lord you know and to me that's everything you know like we can whatever happens on earth is so shortly but like i'm still so grateful that you know having covid we can pray and somehow all my family and my boyfriend don't get covid but you know i've got my salvation which is most important so that's what i like most (laughs) oh that's awesome no i I can definitely relate to that i think the last year you know it's it's not until you kind of get to those points in your life where you, mm. which aren't amazing that you get to actually, you know, really appreciate the peace of God. And, you know, I think it, in the good times, it's easy to take it for granted, but in the not so good times, you definitely, you know, like Job, you definitely cling on to it. And, you know, just for myself right now, having a, a pregnant wife with COVID mm. in the next room, you know, mm. you're a midwife yourself. So, you know, without, without the peace of God, I think I'd probably be losing a bit more sleep than I am. So I'm definitely grateful. And, I, and yeah, I can definitely relate to what you're saying there. So, oh, well, thanks for that. It's been, uh, it's been great. Uh, yeah. So anything else you want to throw in? Um, 
No, but thank you for having me. I was, I was yeah, excited to do an item, but sorry to everyone that I <laughs> to and my voice is not uh, where it normally is. <laughs> oh, just as well, I didn't advertise it. But thanks for coming on and thanks for sharing that stuff. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, look forward to having you back over here. Thank you.